Well, happy Thursday night. I'm Aaron here in the Bowtie Treasure Studio. Hope you all are having a fantastic week. Thanks so much for watching tonight. As you come in, say hi. Don't forget to let us know where you're watching from. It's always good to see where everybody's uh, hanging out from. And tonight we are going to be working on a project behind me and I want to showcase a few other things. But the featured project tonight is Moonshine Metallics. Metallics. I haven't used them in a while, but as I was developing this project, I thought, wow, this is just really a uh, opportunity to try something different. And tonight I'm going to be showcasing the uh, Caribbean color. And uh, there are several colors that you can choose from. And I'm going to use it from an accent type uh, approach. One of the things that I would, uh, yeah, so rude. One of the things I would recommend that you keep in mind with Moonshine Metallics is that it's a thin based paint. So if you want to have aspirations to painting a dresser, it's a thin based paint, so it's going to need several coats. So make sure you have a good base coat that gets you halfway there or started. Uh, for example, just to give you an idea, I figured I have the Moonshine Metallics out. So this is the, I featured this on my page Instagram um, today. And this little jewelry box, I painted with a custom color and it was one part Dixie Belle Blue, one part or two parts Stormy Seas and one part Peacock. And it was a leftover color from another project and I thought I, I need to use that color as much as I can because I really loved it. So anyways, this is, um, so then I used the Caribbean Metallics to give it a little bit of a shimmer and I put the shimmer also inside the crevices of the details. I also used gold gilding wax on the handles and I think it came out really nice. The top of this I used the delicate lace stencil uh, silk screen. So I think that worked out really well. So anyways, you can use Moonshine Metallics on small pieces and I did a little bit of a shading here. I'm going to show you how to do this shading technique on the piece tonight. You see how it's just a little bit of a, I call it shading, but it's almost like a little bit of a vignette. So this is, this is a piece that I am going to, I used the metallics on. Let me set that to the side. So we're going to continue that project or a different project tonight. All right, this piece behind me, I could be wrong, but I'm going to call this uh, somewhat of a Bombay style. I'm pretty sure I don't do a lot of Bombay. I don't see them around here very often, but I found this uh, piece at an estate sale and it was in a good affordable price. I thought it'd make a good life for us tonight. And it's kind of, I like the style. Um, so you, uh, what do you call it? You uh, Bombay experts out there, you can confirm what style this is. That'd be awesome. Let me show you a before picture. It looks Bombay to me. It's got that old world style, kind of stained um, glazed look. And it has hand painted de uh, decoration. The, the sides and the top have a texture like leather. And so that's kind of one of the things I'm playing off of. It was missing one of the hardwares, but I'm re I'll replace it with something that's appropriate. But that's the before picture. And let me show you the texture I'm talking about, okay? Let me bring you in. This is my camera. See that texture? Kind of like a leather. But that's okay. Is I've used the Morocco stencil on the sides and I'm going to do it on the front as well. But one of the things I thought it would be really nice to try first is to distress it a little bit. So that's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to use the Rad Pad. You can get these on Dixie Bell's site. This is the fine. Sometimes my judgment of sandpaper is how does it feel in my hand? If it's really rough and I need rough, I'm in the right place, right? So all I'm going to do for that I thought would be nice to keep this a little bit more rustic or um, is I'm just going to scuff up a little bit of that stencil. This is optional. I'm not doing it because it's it needs sanding. I'm doing it just because I want to bring out some of that that texture that's already on the piece. It's also a good eraser if you need it. So I'm just keeping it a little bit more natural. And again, let me just show you that. So you can see it has a little bit of a little, now it's got a little distressing, and it's not going to feel as fresh. And I think that would be a good look to try the other side. Hopefully everything stays on wheels tonight. 
Usually when things fall off carts, it's when I'm live. So just using my hand to just to stress it a little bit. I think it's, it's gonna keep it a little bit more, maybe authentic might be a good word. So I've already done the sides. Let's let's do this stencil. I'll demonstrate how I, I, how I do it on the front. So my recommendation is get you some moonshine metallics that complement your piece. But keep in mind, again, it's it's very as you can see, it's really loose, thin. I have demonstrated airbrushing metallics. It works really well with an airbrush. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this off to the side. I'm running out of room. My workspace we'll put that right there i've talked about this before but i really like dixie bells round small because it has a really nice flat flat tip so it's good for stenciling um, now here's the unfortunate part about this drawer the stencil doesn't cover the whole thing so i need to divide it in half so what basically I'm, I can do is find the center point and just flip it. So that's pretty much what I'm going to do. The only hesitance, hesitancy that I would have is that if I do this and then I move it, is that the stencil could overlap the previous stencil and cause some issues. But fortunately, there's a little bit of a bow here and I think we'll be okay. So let me just take a visual mark. And I think I'm going to go ahead. I usually don't tape, only somehow or another I... I'm able to work magic with these things, but I'm going to tape this off just because I don't want it to make a mess. I do have, um, if you go to my YouTube channel, Bowtie Treasures, you could probably see me use metallics a little bit more, uh, especially if we like airbrushing. I tell you what, I'm trying to find a natural uh, break on this. It should mirror, so we're just going to make this work. On the sides, I didn't go all the way to the top. And I may not do that here either. Okay, let me move my tape. I just need something to hold it. Let me also put an asterisk on my demonstration by saying I never stress per perfection here. So if you like 100% perfect stenciling work, I'm not your role model. <laughs> okay. So I just am dipping. I'm gonna barely dip it into my, so I just touch the top of the color, just barely. Because this is thin, you don't need a lot. And next thing I'm just gonna double check and I'm using the top of the drawer as my alignment and I am just gonna go in there. If you need to try this on a card stock or a piece of paper or a board, just so that you can understand, if you've done a lot of stenciling, just so that you understand how thin the Moonshine Metallics is, because you might put, you might charge in there and just have way too much. Now, because I'm not putting much on my brush, not, I have to keep going back a little bit more often. And you do as much or as little as you want. I'm just in doing enough so I can control it. But I like to keep this attainable. What I mean by that is, oh, I've got a little too much there. I'm gonna scrape off some extra. If you have to um, discharge some of that off to the side on a rag or paper towel, that's fine. So this is the kind of thing that if you do enough of it, enough of it you should have a general idea how it's gonna turn out. So I like to have stencil work in my repertoire and this is no different this is the morocco stencil patty and it's about as uh bombay as you can get as i could get <laughs> old world you know i like this you could use so many stencil types you could even silk screen this but i needed because of the texture i didn't want to do a silk screen and I also, because of the texture, did not want to do a transfer, so. All right, let's do a little bit of a reveal here, slow and steady. There we go. Right here, it's a little runned, meaning it's it, it escaped a little bit, so I put too much paint there, but this is exactly the look I'm going for. 
This is the part that I have to be careful because if I put my stencil over here, uh, there's a good chance that I could smear that stencil. So this is the, uh, the disadvantage part of this. Because I want to finish this, if you don't mind, let me grab my, I should have got it before. Let me grab my heat gun, heat, and then I can put my stencil on it. So I'm just kind of hitting that one spot. Okay, that's dry to the touch. That's all I needed. So now that we know what we're doing, let's move things around. And what I'm doing right now is I need to line this up. So I need to be a little bit precise here. You know, you want it to be close. So instead of starting right on the edge with fresh paint, I'm going to start here and work my way over so I'm not doubling up on the issue I had last time. There are different brushes you can use. I mean, you could use an official stencil brush, but I've never had a problem. This brush has got a nice firm uh, bristle feel to it. But again, you could pounce it, but if you pounce, you're going to get a texture. You're going to get the ends of the brush. All right, the big reveal. Here we go. I'm going to put the stencil off to the side. <clears throat> so you can see I was lighter here than here. But this is where now, once it's dry, as I demonstrated at the beginning of the live, I can use my sanding pad to blend that. I've got a little bit of a line there, but what you can actually do, and I'll see if I can demonstrate it. Let's use one of Dixie Bell's craft brushes. So this is, Dixie Bell has a set of craft brushes. If you haven't seen them, it's a really nice set. I use them all the time. They're doing great for me and I love, I use a lot of craft brushes. What I'm demonstrating is how I might touch this up. So you see how the two sides don't match? You could just come in here and do a little bit of dabbing to get the value, getting them to match up. And here I am dabbing. And I'm going to rely on the sanding to kind of clean that, uh, to get any issues. So I'm just fading those two edges. But I, I will sand it and that's going to hide it a little bit. Since it is the center and there's no hardware there, I think it'd be nice to kind of clean that up a little bit, but that's the general idea. So let me get on the floor. It's my favorite, getting on the floor. I'm gonna use Dixie Bell's flat small. And then I'm also gonna use this, I believe this is the Bell brush. And I like to shade, not required, but I like to shade with a um, natural bristle, but mainly the thing I like is the, the tapered edge. Okay, it's not flat, it's not blunt like the round small is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some paint at the bottom and we're gonna fade it up. The other thing that I could do is I could put some of the metallic in this groove, but let's see, let's, we're just developing it. We're just um, seeing how it's gonna go. So whatever I do down here, I, I want to do that on all of the legs. So we're going to mist first. Now, I don't know that I really need to do a lot of that because the moonshine metallics are already wet. But what this is going to allow me to do is have a workable space. While I'm painting, the misting will wet the area so that I can then do the shading. All right, so we'll come up a little bit. I think it'd be good for people to see it. So the paint is glammy and sparkly. And at this point, I'm just going to softly fade out that moonshine metallic. Usually I'm doing with this, with this paint, but I'm feeling confident with the metallics based on practicing on the jewelry box I showed at the beginning that I can make this work. Get back to the action. Sorry, I'm working around the back, but I'm doing the same process. I'm just softly fading out work it up 
and then soften it. When I am done, I will top coat this with a satin top coat. But make sure everything's nice and dry. And I'm just kind of slowly fading that up. I'm going to just a touch of mist because I really want to see if I can soften this edge a little bit more. Okay, remember I, if I'm going to do this on all the legs, I kind of have to remember how far up I got, but at least I have a reference point. So from a distance, I'm just adding some, some glam um, to the piece. And I think that'd be kind of fun to have a, a metallic leg down there. Let's try another one. Remember, this is all experimental. If I don't like it, I'll paint over it. But so far, I think it's gonna be a win. And uh, even if I had to paint over it, this is vintage duck egg. And I think I forgot to mention that maybe. Vintage duck egg is pretty easy to repaint. Okay, so let's repeat the steps again. So just put the paint on there. How much paint? Man, that sure is gonna be tough to figure out every single time I do this. So that's one reason why I have the, the rag. If I have to wipe it off, I'm gonna do it quickly so that I can recoup and get this. If it wasn't for the misting bottle, this would be impossible. It's keeping it pliable, workable. Wipe off your, blend, your shading brush if it gets too much paint on it. Kind of tell I have a little too much paint, so I am wiping some of it off right now. So this is just an idea, okay? You 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 decide how you can maybe use this to your advantage. It looked nice on the jewelry box. I think I've never done this with moonshine metallics, so I'm trying something new. So that's what I'm challenging you to do. If you've never used moonshine metallics, I, th I want to say this came out about a year or year and a half ago, maybe two years, and um, I don't get to use it as much. So far of late, my number one thing I like to do with it is um, I, I really like airbrushing with it. I do have a couple videos with that if you're interested on my YouTube channel, I should. So it's still workable, which is great. So it gives me time to really make sure that everything is smooth. I'm gonna try and use a little less paint next time because I'm having to wipe a lot of it off. So it's, I wanna keep it thin. But that's looking pretty magical. Okay, we're all the way around. Back to the front. Just kind of look to see if, the, you definitely want the two front legs to be similar and I have a feeling I'm a little um, short on, let's put a little bit more on this leg. So I have a reference point to check now. Very nice. How about this? How about we work on the top? What I mean by that is we've got this decorative element here. How about we put a, a band of shading in there and let's accent this top. That would be, that would be cool. Just under the top of the legs, that might work too. I definitely haven't ruled that out. So I'm gonna use one of Dixie Bell's craft brushes and I'm gonna use the paint. And then I also wanna continue, tell you what, I'm gonna switch, since we're making this up as we go. I'm gonna to switch to Dixie Bell's French tip because I think that's gonna fit nicely in this gap. So remember what the other thing we need? We need our rag and our misting bottle. I haven't done any, I, I thought about stenciling the top, but I'm kind of feeling it would be overkill. So I'm going to leave the top. I think this will be good. So I'm only going to work on one section at a time. Miss the area you want to work on. Okay. 
And then I'm going to go into the Moonshine Metallics. I'm just going to draw a band of Moonshine Metallics. I may have sprayed too much water. Again, we're kind of figuring this out as we go. Put more Moonshine. It's interesting, I'm not even shading yet, and it already is looking great. So now back to the French tip. This is softening it. This is the shading. This is what you might see a lot of people do with wax. And if you watch, if you go to my YouTube channel, I have a playlist just on shading because I do it all the time. Now it's starting to look like, like it was meant to be. So we're going to miss the front. Just one band. I'm using Dixie Bell's misting bottle. And we're just going to draw a line. Maybe we'll kind of come back a little bit. And dip. Isn't this fun just to make it up as you go? That's the Dixie Bell has pretty much everything you can think of when it comes to products. So you have freedom to just go and make it up and but I will tell you you have to be practicing and doing it to explore new things if I didn't if I had just done cream paint with gilding wax and I said and I didn't think about the metallic we wouldn't be doing this tonight so nothing wrong with the other idea but we're having fun I'm having fun I'm trying something new I forgot about the Dixie dirt, but that would have been an interesting concept if I wanted to go a little bit more old world. See how I'm using this as my rag as the eraser? I'm daring putting my paint on top of my piece. So we're using Pacific, I'm sorry, Caribbean on top of v v Vintage duck egg. My words aren't coming out. Pacific, which is this one, is a little bluer. I'll put that right there. So we're using Caribbean. So that's what I'll do. I'll, I'll add a little bit of touch and then you kind of step back and say, what else does it need? And um, you just have to start making decisions at that point of, do you shade underneath here, shade there? You just make your call. Sometimes you not need to step away for the evening or the day and regroup. And I think that would be fun. And let's kind of make this our, so you can see maybe in some areas how it's, a little extra and I'm just gonna light sand it might look really dull when you do this but when you top coat it a lot of that dullness will go away the texture won't so I'm gonna spend a little extra time right here this is gonna put it back in the old world feel but colorful that's what I'm trying to go for this so just a light sand this is the fine grit although keep in mind that when you use these pads, just because it says fine, it doesn't mean that it's still fine. I mean, if you use it, it's going to wear it out. But that's that's a little bit more of the the rough deal. Let's put a little bit more. This is catching my eye too much. There we go. Now it looks like there's no gap. You can see you can kind of go in there and customize it. After a while, when the hardware's in here, those will stand out. I think that looks better. So you can see the before and after. So we transformed it. It's, it's original to me. It's not cookie cutter and it's got its own style. So I think that was kind of a fun transformation. And, and I hope you all uh, learned something as far as metallics, maybe about some other Dixie Bell products that uh, you can try, whether it's the brushes, the blending, the shading, all the good things. All right, I think that's it for tonight. Hopefully that helped. Uh, don't hesitate to let us know if you're watching by replay. Thank you so much for watching. Holler at a friend, let them know the fun we had tonight. Let them know that uh, we did some cool stuff that maybe they want to try. 
I'm Aaron here in the Bowtie Treasure Studio. Thank you so much for watching. Go out and be awesome. Do something creative. Thank you so much. We'll see you all next time. Take care. That's the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.